In this video, we are going to work the following problem. It says if the cosine of theta is equal to square root of 6 over 5 and theta is in quadrant 4, what is the cosine of 2 theta? Okay, so this 2 theta inside the cosine leads me to believe that we can use a double angle formula to, to figure this out. So I'm going to go back and look at the double angle formulas that I have. Right, and the double angle formula he is here in the, for cosine is here in the middle. I know that cosine 2x is equal to cosine squared x minus sine squared x, also equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared x, and also equal to 2 cosine squared x minus 1. So we're going to pick one of those to use, and uh, there's definitely a choice that's easier than the others uh, for this particular one, and we're allowed to choose which one we want to use. So I'm going to go with the last one on that line, uh, that um, 2 cosine squared x minus 1. So this is the identity that I am going to use. Cosine 2x equals 2 cosine squared x minus 1. The reason why I'm going to pick that one is because I know that only the cosine here. It says the cosine is equal of theta is equal to square root 6 over 5. So um, and that's all I need right here. If they had given me the sign, right, then I would use uh, the other, one of the other ones, uh, the one with only sign in there. All right, so that's what I'm going to go with. And they tell us that the cosine of theta equals square root 6 over 5. Okay. So I can just replace that in this formula. It's going to be 2 cosine squared x minus 1. We know that the cosine is square root of 6 over 5, like so. And then we just work that out. All right, so square root of 6 over 5 quantity squared is going to be square root 6 squared over 5 squared. Square root of 6 squared is just 6, right? Square root of 6 times square root of 6 would be square root of 36, which is just 6. And then 5 squared is 25. Next up, I would multiply, right? 2 times 6 and 1 times 25. So that's going to give me 12 25ths. Next up, is to combine those two numbers together. I have 12 25ths, which is a fraction. So I need a common denominator. Uh, and so for one, right, that's gonna be 25 over 25, right? Because any number divided by itself is one. So that's what I get. Then um, now these two fractions have a common denominator. So I just subtract the numerators and keep it over the same denominator. So when I do that, 12 minus 25, I get negative 13 25th. And that is it on this one. Although there is one thing I want to point out. And uh, you may wonder, hey, well, why, why did they tell us about um, quadrant 4? What, what did that matter? And the way we did it, it really didn't matter. But if you had used one of the other identities, right, if you had used... If you had to use this one, then you would have needed that, or, or this one, you would have, either of those two, you would have needed that piece of information to be able to solve the problem out. But um, we kind of went around that just by using this one. So that just shows, you know, sometimes uh, some choices, you know, while theoretically they're, they're the same, some choices might be easier in practice to, to, to use. Okay, so that's it on this one.